For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that we are commanded by Mark chapter 16 is going in all the world and preach the Gospel. The Gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the Gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the means for you to be saved to get to heaven. For Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now when you choose to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ and die and wake up in hell, that will not be tragic at all. Not when you've been warned week after week after week after week that only Jesus saves. It will not be tragic when you attend a church or religion and you fall off into the lake of fire not believe in Jesus Christ. For you have heard week after week after week religion can't do nothing for you. When you stand before God and the Bible says prepare to meet thy God. It will not be a tragic event for an atheist to meet God when you've been told week after week after week that there is a God. There is no tragedy for entering into the gates of hell. God is faithful. God is long-suffering. That he provides a witness before he judges. He provides his word before he casts down his judgment. And the wrath of God is on those that choose to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. You live in America. You have been truly morally blessed in what you should be as an American. You have the internet, you've got your smartphones, and you can do a Google search on the King James Bible. You can do a search on what does God say for me to get to heaven. You can find multiple resources about the Bible and God on the internet. You are without excuse. Never mind about the people in Africa. Worry about the heathen in America who can find the truth, and you heathen of America who has a preacher that comes to you week after week after week telling you what you need to do. I'll tell you what few Africans will do when they hear this gospel, for I support a African missionary. They will trust and believe the God and Jesus that you hear and reject. There are far more to believe God in the Scriptures than Americans will believe God in the Scriptures. And the Gospel again is that Christ died for your sins. And He was buried. And He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. What Christ has done has been prophesied, has been fulfilled, and there are yet more prophecies in the Bible yet to be fulfilled. And one of those prophecies, which gives you a free will choice, is that when you die, where will you go? And God has given you a means and a way to get to Him. And it's not the way of man. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no salvation.
salvation outside of Jesus Christ. There is no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. And many of you here at the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market will stand condemned before God. Because number one, you will not receive the gospel. You will not trust on Jesus Christ. Number two, you are not thankful of the crops that God has given you. You sit here with your watermelons, your tomatoes, your strawberries, your corn, and everything you've got, and you do not give God the thanks for what you have. America is a thankless society. We as a nation by our forefathers have set one day in November to give thanks to the eternal God in heaven. The forefathers. And that day is given to passing a football, to getting fat and ugly, and then running out to spend money we don't have. We don't give God thanks anymore. We don't allow God's word in the school. We don't allow God's word in the government. This nation that you live in, this nation that you call yourself Americans, are denying and rejecting God. And you will find one day, the defiance of the word of God will make you suffer in a famine. You want a Christian nation, but you don't want the Christian head, Jesus Christ. You want a biblical president and a non-biblical Washington, D.C., our capital. You wonder why our kids are killing other kids. You are wondering why people are getting killed by the masses in America. Because you rejected God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You have rejected Word of God. And today, today somebody can walk in that farmer's market and whip out their gun that they have a right to carry, and they can shoot you up, and you could die, and you could enter into Listen, 
we stand here and give you what God has for free? We have more love and care than that person you just gave money for that watermelon. Because ours is free. God's gift is free. And God's gift is eternal life. The gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Outside of what your opinion is. And it's not even my opinion. It comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. The words I speak to you, they are right. They are holy. No one wants to burn. And yet in hell you will burn. And you'll burn without any time. There will be no relief. That relief is sought in Jesus Christ today, now, because we don't know what tomorrow can hold. You may not have a tomorrow. As I said, we live in a day and age that Americans are killing Americans because they're rejecting the Bible. That's the fruit of being unbiblical. Look at history. The Roman, I mean, the Russian government, without God, without the Bible, killed their own citizens. Adolf Hitler, without a Bible, killed many millions of Jews. Without the Bible, people die. But in Jesus Christ, you can have eternal life. But you Americans want to erase your history. You don't want to study it. And you don't want to see what happened in today yesterday. You are afraid of socialism. You are afraid of communism. And you don't realize it's on your doorstep right now. And the only re relief you're going to get from that is Jesus Christ saving your soul. You may suffer here in this planet. You may suffer in this country. But the relief that when your suffering is ending and you are saved, you can enter to be with the Father. There will be no correction of America. There will be no revival of America. That's gone. America's on a slide going down. And she's applying oil and slipping and sliding down and down and down. In the midst of the turmoil in London, in the United Kingdom, there are preachers just like us preaching the gospel. And just like you and Londoners, you are just walking by, you are rejecting it, you are quit. Does God love gay people? No, he doesn't. He calls it an abomination. Read your Bible, Americans. You got the you got twelfth grade level. You know how to read. There is no hate. God is love, and the love is to preach that Jesus Christ saves. You have been. I am preaching love. God is love. First John, and the love of God is that God sent His only begotten Son, that you may have eternal life. That's the love of God. Stay out of the newspaper. Stay out of the media. Stay out of the public school system. Remember, it's called fake news. But the truth is held in the King James 1611 Bible. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. John 16, 16. You've been perverted by this government. As Nebuchadnezzar perverted his Babylonians. As he tried to pervert the nation of Israel into Babylonianism. And for four young men it did not work. And they were put through the fire. They were put through the lion's den. And yet God brought them out victorious. You will come to the knowledge today if you never believe on Jesus Christ that you were to believe on Jesus Christ. And you'll come to the knowledge and knowledge to God the Father that that man was right. And I'm wrong. And the Bible says that every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let it be now while you're living. Death is coming. The Bible says you'll be laughing, you'll be scoffers. So keep, keep on doing it. You make the Bible real. 
in eternity is Jesus Christ, and if you receive him, he'll welcome you. If you reject him, he'll cast you out. Ladies and gentlemen, this message has been preached in American history to our founding fathers. Benjamin Franklin heard the words of street preachers. And he said in remarks to a street preacher, he said, wow, I could hear him four blocks away. Most of you won't like the heaven because the angels are loud. The Bible says, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their iniquity. In the book of Isaiah. And as Americans, you are a sinner. It's amazing how I mentioned the sin of sodomy and how you spoke up. How about the sin of rejecting God's Son? That is the sin that will put you into hell. Because of the other sins that you are and do, the Bible records the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You need to do something with your sin. You need a payment for your sin. And that payment has been brought on the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. If you don't cancel that sin debt, you will be obligated to pay for your own sins in hell. And that payment is for all eternity. There is never a day that you'll have zero payment due. You will never have in hell that record coming to you saying paid in full. The only way you can cancel your sin debt and get a paid in full is by the blood of Jesus Christ upon Calvary's cross through the empty tomb. And I don't mean taking Jesus by mouth. Salvation is not to be taken orally. It's to be taken by the word and the faith. And then you've got to be careful because Paul tells us that there's another Jesus. There are plenty of Jesuses out there. If you go to Mexico, they name their children Jesus. But that Jesus is not the name that God has given for that person for you to be saved. God never established a religion for salvation. Well, you say, preacher, aren't you a religion? I am no religion. I am a Bible-certified, born-again Christian. Now, again, your fake news doesn't know what a Christian is. You don't even realize that that organization that you call Christian killed Christians because you don't check your history. Imagine calling somebody by the name that they've killed through, the, through their time. And if you want to check that out, you read Fox's Book of Martyrs. That world organization called Christians are not Christians at all. Christians are washed and saved through the blood of Jesus Christ and are born again through the Spirit by acknowledging that they are sinners. That they need to repent. They need to do something before God to get saved. And that something is the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And it's okay. I know you're going to scoff. I know you're not going to believe. I know you're going to heckle. And you don't realize that you are found in the Bible, Proverbs chapter 1. The Bible already said, many will go the broad way. But few will go through the straight gate. And we stand here preaching that some of you will step out of the masses and get right with God. That you will hear these words and it will be planted in your heart. That the only way 
you can be approved by God is Jesus Christ. Again, notice the name that I keep saying. Jesus Christ. You have not heard my name. And as far as the, the four years we've been here, and the Daytona Beach has not closed, the amount of times I've said my name before you, probably, I can count them on both hands, if that. And yet, how often have I mentioned the name of salvation? How often have I mentioned the bread of life? How often have I mentioned the water of life? How much have I offered to do you about God the Son? Who is God, Jesus Christ? I hope in your wicked hearts that when we close from here, when you go about your business, I pray to God every single day that your heart reigns Jesus. Jesus. Acts 4.12, there's no other name given amongst men whereby you may be saved. Or you must be saved, the Bible says. Religion says maybe, but God says you must. And if you stand here and say, well, I got Mary, I got Buddha, I got Allah, my pastor, my priest, my rabbi, that's not the name given by God. That was a name given by his parents or his family. That sure ain't the name. The name whereby you can only get to heaven by is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who is God. And God who is Jesus Christ. 100% God, 100% man. On a time that you supposedly worship his birthday in a time of Christmas, and it's anything but Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the gift of God that giveth eternal life. The Bible proclaims, forsake your sin. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. God never and likes a person that enjoys sin. Can a sodomite come and get saved? Yes, you can. Can a murderer come to God and get right? Yes, you can. Adulterers can come to Jesus Christ and be forgiven. There is no sin that God cannot save you from. But you got to repent of that sin. you got to get right of that sin. you got to hate that sin. And you got to bring it to the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You've got this, Christ. It will not be washed by baptism. It will not be accounted by membership. You can't eat that sin away. You can't drink and think that sin will be cleansed. You must, by the word of God, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I don't see anybody up here preaching about their Prozac, but that's their God. I don't see anybody up here preaching about the King of Beers, but that's their God. I'm preaching about King Jesus of the Jews. I'm preaching about God's Son for salvation. It's free. It's for all. The mouth, is, confession is made. I am only declaring to you the witness of God that Jesus Christ saved. I've been saved since 1987. I know what God has done. You do not because you cannot have God's Spirit, Jesus said, until you believe. You are just children of Satan, John 8, 44. Some of you do not want to hear it. Some of you do not want to have anything to do with God, and you hate what's being said right now. I know that. And you think I'm going to pack up and go away because you reach it out. I'm going to preach even more. Some of you, the Bible says, that you are listening. And Satan 
Satan's come along and taken that fruit, and he has blinded you. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Some of you, the Bible says, that this seed has been planted. And with God's mercy and grace and long-suffering, it will develop over time. The Bible says, either I'm planting a seed right now, or I am watering the seed. But the Bible, the Gospel, is being planted right now at this moment. You will either receive it, or you reject it. You will either go to heaven by Jesus Christ, or you'll go to hell by anything else. It's so easy to go to hell. And yet, it is so easy to go to heaven. Come to Jesus just as you are. A vile, wicked sinner. And I don't even need to know what you sin. I am not up here preaching say, come and tell me what you've done. That's, no, that's anti-Bible. I'm asking you to come forward. We will open the Bible with you. We will show you what God requires for your life to be saved and to repent of what you're doing. And you don't have to tell us anything. But you've got to come to God as you are. Vile and wicked. Oh, that hurts Americans so bad. Some of you Americans are offended. I don't care. You are a wicked, vile sinner in the hands of a holy, righteous God. God knows things about you that your spouse and your parents don't know. Because God knows everything. God has opened that closet of skeletons and examined every bone. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Notice how the Bible's being preached. I am not bringing the words of men. I am bringing the Holy Scriptures. God knows if you had shortchanged that customer that you had today. God knows what your mind is thinking even though your psychiatrist doesn't know. God, with His Word, the sword, the Bible says in a way in Hebrews 4.12, that He will pierce those thoughts and those imaginations. He sees what you're doing. And he knows what you haven't done, but what you're thinking about. And you will, without Jesus Christ, stand guilty before the judge of the world. You will stand in condemnation in the wrath of God without Jesus Christ. When you do not believe on Jesus Christ, and then you die... You will stand before God the Judge, which is Jesus Christ, with no defense at all. And the books were open, and they were judged of their works. What on earth can you do better than what Jesus has done? Well, let's see. Let's see what Jesus done. Let's break it down. All right, number one, Jesus was sinless. That disqualifies you. For the Bible says all have sinned, Romans 3. So you can't beat Jesus who is sinless because you are a sinner. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, so when you die, you prove you're a sinner. So that work of being sinless, you fail, you'll go to hell. Number two, should have 
it, number one, but Jesus is God. Now, I know Americans say, oh, we're the best, we're the greatest, we've got the big hands, and we're number one. You are not. It says in Psalms, believe it or not, and Jesus said, that the scriptures say, are you not God's small g? In the eyes of God, you are a small g God. You are not the God. Because you're a sinner. Because you are created by God, the Creator. Now what can you create that God had not created when God created all this out of nothing? See, in order to be better than Jesus Christ, you got to be God. And you are not. So, number one, you are not sinless. Number two, you're not God. Shall we try number three? Or shall I just quit? Number three, in order to be better than Jesus Christ and get to heaven on your own merits, you have to be creator. Now the Bible says that Jesus is God and God is Jesus, so Jesus in Genesis 1 created as God and God as Jesus Christ created. Now, if you can create something, you can save your soul, yourself. You don't need Jesus. Now, okay, you cannot take a lump of ice cream and blueberries and combine it together and say, look, I made blueberry ice cream. That don't count. I can go into a laboratory and take chemicals, and with these chemicals I can make something. That don't count. You see, in Genesis 1, when God created, He said, let there be light. And He didn't go into His back room of His chemicals and made the light. He made that light out of nothing. He said, let there be a sun, let there be the moon, let there be the stars. Which of came from nothing but the voice of God. And that voice of God is Jesus Christ, John 1.1. 1, 1. So if you can create something from nothing with your voice, then you can say you've done better than Jesus Christ. But you've got to be God, too. And you've got to be sinless, too. I don't need to go any further. Because you're not God, you're not sinless, and you're not a creator. So you cannot save yourself. You say, well, I'll give money to charity. Alright? Are you going to give dollars, yen, pesos, talent? Which form of money are you going to give? You know how many forms of money there's been since man has been on this planet? Which one? In God's exchange for sin, what are you going to give Him in value of money? You're going to give Him gold? That belongs to God. God made the gold. You just dug it out. You're going to give Him silver? Silver is made by God. You, you just dug it out. You're going to pay God for something that you've done by something that God made Himself. Really. I've got medical bills. Let me grab your wallet and go pay my medical bills. Well, you say, that's stupid. Well, that's how you think that you think your coins are going to please God. You're, you are relying on something that God's already given you to pay for something that you've done. It's not going to work. And if it's American money, it has no value. You can't pay your way into heaven when the Bible says, Acts 20, 28, that God purchased the church with His blood. In order to be paid before God your sins, it has to be blood. Now for you, Islam, Islam, and the Mohammedans, it's not the blood of men. Men are sinners. You can't approach 
God was sending blood and saying, here I am. You got the wrong blood. You got to have the blood that is God's blood, remember? You got to have the sinless blood, remember? And you got to have the blood that created, that's in God and Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. <coughs> So if you go out and shed blood for salvation, God can't receive it. It's polluted blood. You're going to approach to God with blood. And what if that blood has cancer cells in it? You know, blood travels diseases. What if that blood is HIV positive? You think God's going to receive that? What if that blood carries an ST, STU? You think God's going to take that blood that's been polluted when He has the sinless blood of Jesus Christ that washes away our sins? The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the, sin of the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Jesus died on the cross according to the Scriptures, and He was buried, and He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You know, you will die. Let's just take it for granted. We're going to die. I guess we're up to number four. If you can purchase your own sin, if you can get to heaven on your own merit, number four, when you die, can you raise yourself from the grave? Jesus died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. You will die. The wages of sin is death. You'll die according to the scriptures. You'll die as a sinner. And they will bury you. Most will be buried. And yet the third day Jesus Christ arose from the grave according to the scriptures. I've been in many cemeteries, but I've never seen a body come out. And yet all four Gospels record for us that the angel said, He is not here, He is risen. So you can't come to God on your own merit, because you can't even come out of the grave as Jesus done. And the only way a person can get victory over death is by Jesus Christ and the finished work of the Gospel. I'm a sinner, I'm going to die. I'm a saved sinner. And when this body perishes, I'll be absent from this body and present with the Lord. By the merit of Jesus Christ, by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, am I saved. I am trusting in no other. There is no one, nowhere, or no can cleanse my soul but Jesus Christ. Nothing. God only accepts the finished work of Jesus Christ for salvation. There is no other. And if you, if you're here, and I know you can hear me. And I don't care. I don't want to hear what you're saying. I just don't care. I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in God. It, one day you're going to find out that you are wrong. An atheist's worst nightmare as the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Now, when you don't believe in God in that day you meet Him, you're already on foul ground. You can 
not just wishing away. There's accountability set by God. And you will be accountable for your sins unless you believe on Jesus Christ. If you choose to deny it, if you choose to drug it, alcohol it, dope it, forget it, you will stand before that God that you alcohol it, that you doped it, that you pilled it, that you forgot it. And you'll get no victory. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. One person said, well, I'll preach more love. What greater love is there than that? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's a sacrificial love. That's a love of giving. That in our condition as sinners, God says, I don't want them to go to hell. I will give them an opportunity to believe on my son to be saved. And yet, he has given man a free will choice. You get a free will choice at the coffee shop. Good afternoon. How may I help you? And then you choose what you want. What coffee you want, what drink you want, what donut you want. And God's approaching you today and saying, good afternoon, or good morning. What do you want? Do you want heaven, or do you want hell? There are no other options. Oh God, I want heaven. Well, then you need the blood of Jesus Christ. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? If there's no blood of Jesus Christ taken by faith, by repenting of your sins, you are not safe. You will rely on the wrath of God. John 3.36 Jesus said you must be born again. You are born in Adam's sins. You are a sinner by popping into this world. And maybe a good shrink will say it was your grandparents' fault. It was your mom's fault. And you know what? It's true. It is Adam's fault. Alright, because it's Adam's fault, God, Jesus Christ, stepped out of heaven and said, Okay, fine. Yeah, Adam, you're in trouble. But the love of God, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in should not perish but have everlasting life. Alright, it's our grandparents' fault, but God has provided us a remedy that's not a pill. It don't come in a bottle. You don't roll it and smoke it. You don't sit cross-legged and, and moon yourself. Moon yourself. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. And then those sins of your grandparents will be canceled and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. the remedy. You got a cancer? Will you
you have a cancer? I read somewhere and they say everybody will have a cancer in their life. And you may die and that cancer be in your body, but they say 100% of the people will have a cancer. 100% of the people are sinners. You go to the doctor and the doctor does his test, he says, it's cancer. Well, doctor, what do I do? First thing we need to do is we need to cut it out. We need to remove that cell. Okay, doc. Set the appointment. Let's go. God says you're a sinner. And that sin is terminal. The wages of sin is death. You will die because you are a sinner. And you approach to God or a preacher, a man with a Bible. You go to the Bible. You say, Bible, I am a sinner. I'm going to die. I want to die right, God. God says we got to wash that sin. No. Oh God, I say five Hail Marys and the, you know, the Lord's Prayer. And God says that's not the surgeon. That doctor can't help you. And you'll say, well, I go to this church. And God will say that church is the wrong occupation to take care of your sin. He says, you need to see my son. And you say, God, what will my son, what will your son do with my sin that's going to kill me? He'll wash you of that sin. He will remove that sin and make you clean. And that is the only way I will receive you being clean. Now again, if you've got a cancer, and the doctor says, well, we've got to cut it out, you don't go to a dentist. You don't go to your shrink. Shrink, get rid of ain't going to do it. They're the wrong professions. And when it comes to your sin, if you go to anybody but Jesus Christ, you are in the wrong profession, and they won't do nothing for you, but they'll take your living. That's in the Bible. To be relieved of sin is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now you will die, unless the rapture happens, but that's... But when you die, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to heaven. If you go to the other professions, when you die, and you will die, you will go to hell. Now when that doctor removes that cancer, and you go about the chemotherapy and everything needs to be done, that doctor will hopefully one day say, it's gone. You are cancer free. And guess what? You'll still die. And you may post to God and say, God, that, that great surgeon removed my cancer. And yet he cannot remove your sin. You did not visit my son's office. You said, where's your son's office? It's on a hill called Calvary. And when you come to Jesus' office, where he died according to the scriptures, and if you exit that office by the empty tomb, that he is not here, he is risen, and you have put your faith and trust, and you have repented of your sins, and you have asked God to save you through Jesus Christ, you come out of that tomb a Christian. The new birth. And 
you will not go to hell when you die. Now, if you were to get saved today or tomorrow, salvation is not going to get you a million dollars. If you have cancer, you'll probably still have cancer. You'll have problems, and the Bible says even more. But when you die, it changes your destination from hell to heaven. But I want to have a wonderful life here. So does everybody else. That's why some companies make billions of dollars trying to deceive people. And yet salvation by Jesus Christ is free. And it's God sent, for God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son. You can't approach God without Jesus Christ and be safe. Because the Bible says, and we, we rely on what the Bible says, as a Christ-rejecting human, you're going to stand before God in judgment. The problem is that the Jehovah Witnesses can't get. You see, God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. So when you approach God that final judgment day, you will stand before Jesus. I dare you to tell Jesus you were better than he was. I dare you. And you will. You will try to plead your way out. And whatever you've done, whatever you believe. And the one that died on that cross, according to the scriptures, and Jesus was buried, and he arose again the third day, according to the scriptures, the finished work of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. That Jesus you'll stand before and say, Hey, Jesus. What I did was more important than what you did. And the one that finished the work of God, that will declare to you, the sinner, and no you not, no you did it, now depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But Jesus didn't, I, but Jesus didn't, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Merchants and businessmen of Daytona Beach Farmers Market. You will meet Jesus that we preach. Do not let him tell you, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And you cannot say, well, we did not know Jesus. There is no violence. You're yelling at people and scaring them. Have you ever, have you ever read the book of Revelation? I've read the whole damn All Bible. Right. The Bible says, doesn't it say that the angels are allowed? Read the back of my shirt what Isaiah said. Isaiah said, I said you need to read the back. All right, you, but, are, you are scaring people. Oh. I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Maybe they. The blood of the Prozac. While we give them the blood of Jesus, go give them the Prozac. Because the blood of Jesus will cleanse man of all sin. I don't think Jesus meant to scare people. He didn't scare anybody. And he pre hey, didn't he preach he, to 5,000 did. people? He didn't. But by God, brother, you do. Were you there? Were you there? Were you there with Jesus? Twice. Oh, okay. There we go. There's a fruitcake. The guy called me a fruitcake. He's been there with Jesus. That's a fool. I got a
No, I was not dealing with Jesus. I take him by faith. Glory to God. Hey, just quit scaring people. You scared me. Someone professes to be where Jesus was alive. You scare me. Fruitcake. You'll say, I never knew God. And God, Jesus Christ, according to Proverbs chapter 1 again, will laugh in your face to say, what was that person that you hated? What was that person's message that you did not like? And you'll get that big lump in your throat because you will have a throat, you will have eyes, you will have a tongue, you will have hands and fingers. And that moment you'll realize what we preach to you is the truth. It is the life. It is the way. Prescribed by God. And I hope you don't reject it. Because rejecting what Christ has done for you as a sinner is hell. The only sin that will put you in hell is rejecting Jesus Christ. Now you need Jesus Christ because you are a sinner. There's no fear. People are not afraid to step out in front of a moving car. No, they're afraid of you yelling. Yeah. They're not afraid of going to hell. One day, this loudmouth preacher will be a benefit to you, or it will be a shame to you. You know, you people rest assured that my loud voice since I've been a child, the calling that God has called me to proclaim His Word. And I don't care if you don't like it because God says go out and preach the gospel. But God is coming. Death is coming. And if you die without Jesus Christ, again, it's hell. I'd like to take this garbage can here and set it on fire. I'd love to put some wood in it to burn. And I would ask you one by one to jump in this fire and you would say you're crazy. If I had a fire right here right now, and I invited you to come and jump in this fire, you wouldn't do it. Maybe weird man that's been with Jesus, maybe he'd do it, but normally you would not jump into a fire. And yet, if you reject Jesus Christ, you will jump into the lake of fire that burns forever. You see, if you want to burn yourself, you can have relief. But if you burn in the lake of fire, that's eternal. No end. There is no relief. So you see, it wouldn't be tragic for you people here at Daytona Beach this afternoon. It would not be tragic for you to die and end up in hell. Because you've been told how not to go. If you hear this gospel, and this is going to sound cold, and I don't mean to sound cold. But if you are hearing this message... And you reject God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You deserve hell. Because you've heard. You've heard the way. You've heard the truth. And you can choose today to get life. And that life is by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no other way to God but by Jesus Christ. 
no other way. And if you die and wake up in hell, and I don't say that because I don't, I'm preaching that you don't go to hell. But if you're to die right now and wake up in hell, it's not tragic and you deserved it. I don't know how to say that without trying to sound false, but it's the truth. If you die without Jesus Christ, it is not tragic, and you deserved it. You have gone to hell over the Bible. You have gone to hell over a preacher. You have gone to hell over Jesus Christ. And we preach that you might not go. Good. She has help. She needs. There's no grace and mercy without Jesus Christ. God says, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. You cannot have peace without Jesus Christ because you're wicked. You are not good. The Bible says there is none good. No, not one. Just in case you were going to argue with that verse. Come to Jesus as you are, a sinner. Repent of your sins. You cannot come to God and say, Oh, we're, we're gay and God loves us. And God's not going to receive that kind of attitude. You've got to come to God with your sins, being sorry for your sins, being repentant of your sins, and seeking the victory over your sins by Jesus Christ. God is love. First John. But God doesn't love anybody that rejects His Son. Don't tell me by you rejecting Jesus Christ that God loves you. You're lying. Add that to your sins. And it's nonsense to say, Oh, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. No, that's a lie. Because anybody that rejects his son, God hates. You haven't read Proverbs. There are things that God hates. And God hates you week after week after week rejecting his son that's being preached. And yet God's long-suffering. It's not that God loves you. It's God is long-suffering. You don't even thank God for an extra week to hear the gospel. Wow. What about you? No, no, I'm just saying that almost an accident. I'm just saying, wow, the drivers. Do you realize it's the mercy and grace of God that we're here each and every Saturday? You know, I don't have to be here. And some of you accuse me of no love. I love you enough that I'm here with the gospel. I don't want to see you go against God. I want you to know that Jesus saves. You're the enemy. You're the hateful ones. You're the ones that say, don't come beyond these, these uh, barriers. Stay out 
Side ass farmers market. I'd like you to come over here. Come on over. Your farmers market wouldn't say that. You're the hateful ones. You're the ones that get angry at me, and I'm not angry at all. And religion can't do it. It's by Jesus Christ. You're the ones that are being hateful and detestful, not me. What, because I mentioned hell, it's hate? Because I mentioned that Jesus is the only way that's hate? You should hear some of the words that people come up to us and tell us. That's hate. When a grown man goes to a 14-year-old girl and gives him every filthy mouth that comes out of his filthy mouth, who's got the hate? Oh, you preach against sodomites, that's hate. No, we want to see them get right too. We want to see them get clean. We want to see them get right with God. We want them in heaven. Just not in their sin. The love of God is that He sent His only begotten Son. People. Sorry, P.S. No. It's half a moon, not a full moon. That's all extra. What goes behind me in the parking lot. I just almost saw six accidents today. I love serving the Lord. You know, Americans... I can, I can prophesy this for sure, and my family can back me up. You may never meet Donald Trump. I may never meet Donald Trump. You may never meet a president in your life. A U.S. president. You may, ne you may meet one, but then again, you may not. But I know one thing for sure. You, every one of you, will meet God Almighty one day. 100% you will meet God. Either right or wrong. Either God's good side by Jesus Christ, or by the wrath of God by not having Jesus Christ. But you will see God one day. And it won't be on the television, it won't be a picture in the newspaper. You will see God more than you'll ever see a U.S. president. You saved and lost will be judged by God more than the chances of ever walking through the White House, even on a tour. It is more sure for you to meet God 